Saxon Algebra 1, Lesson 106. Down here. There was our last lesson. Equation of a line. That's a topic we run into a lot. Because I'll tell you what. If you sit down any college math professor and say, what should a well-prepared high school student be learning about mathematics in order to rock it out at the college level? And one of the things that she will tell you is you need to understand equations of lines and how to manipulate those. So we come back to them again and again and again and again and again and again and again, and we'll do them all next year too, um, which is cool because they're not too hard. There's a couple really nice formulas that we use, but I'm gonna back up and give you just a wee bit of theoretical information that we haven't touched on yet, but it's important that you know. The standard form of an equation of a line looks like this. Some number times an x, plus some number times a y, plus a third number by itself, equals zero. We call this the standard form of a line. Now, we don't see that very often because this is an entirely unhelpful way to arrange the letters. What we would much rather do is we shove the AX term across, we shove, shove, excuse me, I can't speak. I can do math, but I can't talk. We, we boot the C, and then we divide everything by B so that we get this in an order that we call Y equals MX plus B. Now this B means something different. It's not the same B. But this is what we're used to, right? This is our dear old friend, and this is called the slope intercept. Form of a line. All right, that's this one, and this is this one. This is the one we like because it's super easy to graph from. And the name is clever because it shows us the slope and the intercept. Oh, thus the name, right? So I think it's next year. We're going to learn there are actually like five different ways you can arrange this standard form of a line. And we'll practice moving from one form to the other. But this is our fave because it's so graphable. It's so entirely graphable. That's why we love it, okay? You love it. I know you do. Don't even try to pretend. Don't even look at me with your serious teenage boy faces and try to pretend you don't adore that formula because I know you do. Okay. Ready? Ready? All right, the other thing, I think we've talked about, let me just show you the example. Example 106.1, find the equation of the line that passes through the points four, two, and minus five, minus three. Okay, we could graph these. Um, normally you don't have to, but I'm just gonna do it now just to show you what it looks like. But, but normally you don't have to do this because that's the whole magic of what I'm gonna show you is that you don't have to graph them. Okay, four, two, and negative five, one, two, three, four, five, and negative three, there. Okay, we wanna know how far it is, the distance between those two points. Hmm, okay. Well, we could do it by turning this into a right triangle, right? And we could count how many units that side is, and we could count how many units that side is. We could call this A, and we could call that B, and we could call that C, and we could say A squared, plus b squared equals c squared, and then we could do a bunch of magical um, algebra and find that length, right? Because that's what we want to find is this. But we have another way to do it that's easier, and that is something called slope formula. I love slope formula because it just cuts out all the nonsense. If you want to find the slope to a line and you've got two points, There it is. 
I'll show you how to use it. But there it is. Make sure you copy that. Blaze it into your heart and your soul. And, you know, your mind, too, for that matter. Um, that little gem saves us so much drama. It's not even funny. So we're going to memorize it. Um, we're going to have another formula in the future that kind of builds off this. So it, if you memorize this, it'll make it that much easier to memorize the next one. Let me show you how to use it. These are the two points that we were given, right? So we're just going to name them x1, y1, and x2, y2. Now, does it matter that the first one is 1 and the second one is 2? No. What does matter is that you get your x's and y's in the right place, and that the two that go together, they need the same subscript. And these guys need the same subscript. These could be the ones and these could be the twos. That would be fine. But it will work out either way. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this formula. And I highly recommend buckets. And let me tell you why. Anytime you have a formula that has minus signs in it, as well as possibly negative values we're putting in, if you don't put in the minus signs, you will lose your mind. I, you'll get wrong answers is what you'll do. Then you'll lose your mind. Okay, so we're going to follow this trail of breadcrumbs to fill in these buckets using these values. Okay, so first I need y2. That's negative 3. And then I need y1. is 2. Then I need x2. Minus 5. And then I need x1. Okay, it takes a little bit of concentration. It's really easy to screw that, but you'd be surprised how many times students just get sloppy. Okay, now I'm going to simplify. Minus 3 minus 2 is minus 5. Minus 5 minus 4 is minus 9. That simplifies to 5 over 9. Yay, that is the right answer. Now, what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to find the equation of the line. I think we've already done this much, haven't we? We're supposed to find the equation of the line that passes through those two points. And there's my picture of it. Um, but we found the slope using this lovely slope formula. Now, so that's the first step. And now the second step is, let me write it. He's having some little puppy dreams here. Doing a little bit of yipping. Okay, so now we're going to take our y equals mx plus b beast. And we're going to substitute in m, which we found right here. Right? There it is. And then we're going to substitute in one of these pairs, x and y. We'll put in for this x and y. Choose whichever pair you like. I always look the, for the one that I think looks easier. So I'm going to put in 4 for x and 2 for y. And the b will stay the same, and that's what we're going to solve for. Ready? Okay, so 2 equals 5 over 9 times 4. Ooh, I don't like the looks of that. Let's put it over 1. Plus b, plus b, yes. Okay, so what we've done is we've got numbers now for everything except this last one. Cool, now we can solve for it. We're going to have to multiply these and then swim them across. This equals 20 over 9. So what I'm going to have to do, I'm adding it to b, so I'm going to have to subtract 20 over 9 from both sides. Now, that looks horrible, but it's not too bad. We've got a 2 here, though, and I would like the 2 to be over a 9. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 9 over 9, and that will give me 18 over 9. Now I've got that canceled. This is just a b. 18 over 9 minus 20 over 9 equals, I can say b equals minus 2 over 9. Okay? So now I've solved for m and I've solved for b. I'm going to write my answer up here just where I have space. And the equation of the line that passes through those two points equals y equals 5 over 9x minus 2 over 9. Right? y equals mx plus b 
There's my M, and there's my B. Did you love it? I did. Which is kind of cool. Again, we don't even have to draw this picture anymore. I did it just so you could sort of see what we were doing. And that's kind of fun because these fractions that are disgusting, we don't care. They're just numbers on the page to us. We don't have to try and graph them. They're just numbers. So that takes away the sting of those icky problems. Okay, there's two more to do. These are the steps we're going to follow. Let me just puffy cloud of knowledge this. And that says one pair, not one pale. Substitute in M and one pair of X and Y to Y equals MX plus B. That's what we're plugging into. All right, let's try it again. Oh, that was so fun. Ready? Example 106.2. Find the equation of the line that passes through the points, and then I write down the points. Okay, the first formula I'm going to need is slope formula because our first step is find M. I'm gonna write this up here just to remind myself of what I'm doing. Remember, this is the slope intercept form of a line. Finding M, oh, we need our cool, super groovy formula, right? Y2 minus Y1, X2 minus X1. Um, again, I just go in order, X1, Y1, X2, Y2, but you can't screw that up. Okay, let's make some buckets. And you'll get the same answer both ways. Um, okay, ready? Let's go in order. Y2 is 4. Y1 is negative 2. I'm thankful for my buckets. That's scary. X2 minus 3. X1 positive 4. Okay. Now we simplify. Those two go together. 4 plus 2 is 6 over. And that becomes negative 7. And this isn't wrong, but I much prefer to see, as much as I hate floaty numbers, I'm all about those floaty minus signs. Okay, so there's our value for M. We found M. Do you feel good about it? I do. Okay, now our second step is to find B. That's the one where we substitute in for three out of four, right? We're gonna use this formula so I'm going to write y equals m times x plus b. y, we pick either pair we want. I'll pick the second pair this time just to make it fun. The y is 4. m is minus 6 over 7. x, let's see, we're using the second pair, right? So that's minus 3. And then b is what I'm trying to find. All right. This is positive 18 over 7, right? That's what 6 times 3 is 18. Two negatives make a positive. There's my 7. I'm just going to cross that out. This always gets a little messy. Um, so I'm going to subtract 18 over 7 from both sides. I'm fine, but I need to fix this. I'm going to multiply it by 7 over 7, and I get 28 over 7. Now I can do 28 over seven minus 18 over seven, life is a dream, and I get 10 over seven equals B. Oh, well that's kind of cute, right? And so now I can write my equation of my line, Y equals minus six over seven X plus 10 over seven. This looks like I attached it to the seven. I meant it to be floaty. The X is kind of floaty in these. Ah, we do it for these. We make the X float. You can put it up in the top if that makes you feel better. All right, this is our final answer. That's the equation of the line that passes through those two points. And you know, I don't know if you care, but that's kind of a cool thing to be able to do. Your college math professors will be like, dang, you've learned your algebra real good. 
All right, find the equation of the line that passes through the points 4, 3, and 4 minus 3. Now, as soon as I write those down, I go, man, there's something fishy about that, isn't there? That doesn't seem right. Let me just graph it because I don't understand what I'm looking at there. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4. And I need to go, oh, no. They're both positive. I need to go up and down, don't I? Okay, 4, 3 is right here. And 4, negative 3 is down here. Aha! That's a vertical line. And I know that's going to have a weird equation because the lines that go either straight up and down or straight horizontally, they have weird equations. They don't look normal to us. All right? So I'm just going to carry on, though, knowing that something weird is probably going to happen somewhere along the line. Let's do our M calculation. We'll do x1, y1, x2, y2, right? Just filling them in. Um, set up my formula, right? Um, I've got it right here, so I don't need to write it over. Remember, my rule is as long as you can see it on your page somewhere, you don't have to write it over again. If I turn the page, I would have to redo it. Okay, ready? Because I want to have it in front of me. That's why. That's not just random psychotic teacher business. Minus 3 minus 3 over 4 minus 4. Okay? So let's see what we've got. Minus 3 minus 3 is minus 6 over, uh-oh, kingdom just blew up. That's undefined. So we say the slope is undefined. M equals the slope. So I can say M or slope. Undefined. Okay. What that means is that our equation isn't going to have... It means it proves that this is a vertical line. Only vertical lines have undefined slopes. All right? Good to know, right? You didn't know that. But we knew something was up when we saw these points. They looked weird. We get the zero here. We know that there's problems. Now, we could write... Okay, how do we find the equation of this? We just look at the graph and try to make sense of it. We see that for every value of y that's changing here, x is always 4. So we can write x equals 4. And that would be the answer. This is a tricky one. All right? Not necessarily hard, but tricky. So keep an eye out for that. If the denominator of your slope formula goes to zero, you have an undefined line, it's vertical, and you can write it as x equals something, but not y equals something. Okay. I hope that's all just as clear as mud to you. Um, we'll work on this a ton next year, um, fine-tuning this and making sure you understand it all. Guess what? We're halfway through the week. So exciting, right? Okay, I will see you at a later date, gentlemen. Carry on.